Welcome back to the film industry and this is my first official episode. Today's episode is going to talk about what exactly the film industry is and we're going to answer the question, do you need film school? Does one really need film school in order to succeed in the film industry? What is the film industry? On the most basic level, it's pretty much movies in a nutshell. Any type of movie you see, it's the film industry. You have studio movies and you have indie movies. And there are pretty much two categories of the film industry. It's the studio side and the indie movie side. Studio is basically your big budget, crazy million dollar films that you pay your $15, $20 to go <laughs> per ticket to see that movie. An indie movie is pretty much short for independent. And that only means that it's independent from the big studios. You have no big company, no big corporation backing your film financially for one. You have no one telling you you know, what you have to do. You have no one saying and tripping your ear, hey, you can't make a movie about this. So independent is pretty much you're on your own. You don't have News Corporation, Disney, Viacom, Sony, NBC Universal, or Time Warner. Those companies own the big Hollywood film studios. And just a sidebar, I'm only talking about US industry because there is the Bollywood scene, there's UK, there's all different type of film industries all over the world and they're pretty much similar but there are different things that could vary. You know, minor differences here and there. I have to mention the film festival circuit that is also part of the film industry. From there, you can pick up a distribution deal and distribution deals mean you make money. <laughs> so we're gonna switch gears a little bit here and we're gonna get to the film school side of this episode. Do you need film school? I wanna be in film and film school is known to be the only way to get where you wanna be, which I'm going to prove you wrong, people. What is film school? It is any educational institution giving you and teaching you the aspects of filmmaking. <laughs> that's what I found and that's what it is. So that means fancy or not, cheap or I owe you my firstborn expensive. Now let's get into directors for a second. I chose some directors that some of you may know, some of you may not know. I want to share their story on, you know, they have successful careers, but you know, some of them went to film school, some of them didn't. I'm gonna get started with J.J. Abrams. Now, he made Star Trek, one of my favorite remakes of Star Trek. I love this movie. And another Star Trek coming out next year, just by the way, a little sidebar. J.J. Abrams went to Sarah Lawrence College, if I'm not mistaken, and had interest in films when he was, you know, mid-teens, 15, 16, he started writing and doing scripts and stuff at that age. His mom was an executive producer and his dad was a TV producer. So he had a connection. The next director I'm talking about is Steven Spielberg. Now, everyone knows Steven Spielberg. If you don't, you're living under a rock. But his story is really unique and I really like his story because he applied to the USC film school and got rejected twice. And that's really kind of surprising. He eventually got an honorary degree from that school, but he went to USC, Long Beach, and he interned for Universal Studios. And there he made his first short film and that's where he kind of got his start. George Lucas. Star Wars people. He actually went to a junior college, transferred into USC School of Cinematic Arts, and that's where he got his BA. Went and did the military thing for all. He's in the Air Force, got drafted into the Army, and all that jazz. And then he went back to school, got his MFA in film arts at USC. So he actually did go to film school. Michael Bay, Transformers, all those action flicks, whatever. He actually interned with George Lucas when he was 15 years old. He then went to film school, BA film school. After that, he got his MFA in the Center of Design Art College at Pasadena. I think I got that right. Roland Emmerich. Now, he did 2012, The Day After Tomorrow. He did go to film school in Germany. Everyone knows this guy, probably doesn't know him by name, but Oren Pelly. I have no idea if I'm saying his name right, because I don't, I'm, I'm, not really a fan of paranormal activity, but that's the guy. He made that movie for 15 grand and now he makes millions of dollars because now he signed to a studio. But he started out as a software programmer, had an idea about, you know, documenting paranormal activity with cameras and made the movie about it. You know, that's just an idea he had and he went with it. This is one of my favorites, Tim Burton. I love his movies. Anytime he's somehow connected to a movie, I love them, I don't care, everyone hates on him, but 
He did go to school, but he didn't go to film school. He went to the California Institute of the Arts for Animation. So he didn't actually go for, you know, actual film, film school. Woody Allen, he went to NYU for communications and film. Kevin Smith, as far as I know, I heard that he went to film school but then dropped out, but I couldn't find anything to prove that. But he has no film school. He had success through the indie film festival circuit. Peter Jackson, now Lord of the Rings, The Hop is coming out, I think this month. Now, he has no formal film training whatsoever. Everything that he knows, editing, producing, all of that, uh, in production, everything, he is self-taught. Spike Lee went to Morehouse College, it's an all-black college where he studied communications, and then he moved on to get his MFA at Tisch, the NYU Film School. Martin Scorsese, he got his BA in English, and then he went on to get his MFA at NYU. Quentin Torrentino, Pulp Fiction. I mean, if you guys don't know this, you're crazy. If you have not seen Pulp Fiction, you need to see it now. He actually was a high school dropout. When I looked him up, I was totally surprised. He dropped out of high school, you know, pretty much thought it was a waste of time, went to acting school, dropped out of acting school, and then pretty much went from there and started writing and whatever. And he had just, he kept his connections. He had made an acting school and just totally went with it. So. Robert Rodriguez. Um, some of you guys may know him, some of you may not, but I read his book about how he became you know, who he is now. He went to University of Texas for communications and his grades were not high enough to get into the film program. But his book is really, really cool. You wouldn't believe the things he did to kind of make this movie, his first movie. My last director, totally love his stuff. Christopher Nolan, Inception, totally love his stuff. Gah. Oh, such a fan, sorry. <laughs> Christopher Nolan has a really, I think, a unique story because he did actually go to a regular college in the UK, transferred schools because the one school had a film society where he, they had like certain equipment that they, he wanted to use and he had, they had certain things that were pretty much an asset for him to learn how to be a filmmaker. And he became president of the film society and everything that he did there wasn't actually because he went to the school but the club that it had, if that makes any sense. No film school really. So you may have noticed that with all the different directors, they all have different stories and you know, Woody Allen and George Lucas and whatever, they, they did do the NYU route where they went to film school when the industry was still forming and growing and it definitely wasn't what it was today. Like back then in the 60s and 70s, they didn't have the means that we have today. Film school really was your only way to kind of get educated on making a film. You know, the, the internet didn't exist. Oh my God. There was only so much access you had to learn. So film school kind of was essential back in the day, you know, when George Lucas and Woody Allen were just starting out. So film school doesn't make or break a director. But what about all the other departments? Do you need to go to film school to be a DP, a director of photography? Do you need to go to film school to be a makeup artist? Do you need to go to film school to be a special effects artist? When you want a career in film, you're gonna start out as a PA, whether you go to film school or not. What is film school really teaching you? Again, we'll go back to, to the definition. It's an educational institution where it teaches you the aspects of filmmaking, right? You can go to any film set, you can look on Craigslist, you can look on Mandy, you can look on government sites that have a film database where they have to actually list all the productions in town. New York City has one. I'm pretty sure LA probably has one as well. Now, you call those numbers, you go to the production offices, they're listed. You go there and say, hey, I need work, whatever. Hey, I'm willing to work for free. Yes, if you work for free on a big budget film, it will pay off eventually, just saying. So you basically go on set and you get thrown into the mix and you learn about every department and that's pretty much your best education and it's free and you might even get paid. My opinion is that you can learn faster, cheaper, and just a better well-rounded education of what filmmaking is if you throw yourself on set as a, as a PA. My background, I went to college, I went for media production as I said in the last episode and if I could go back would I redo it the same way? I wanted to go to college. That was one of my main things. No one in my family went to college and that was my main goal is to get further educated. I actually wanted to go to college for political science, so it just wasn't it wasn't always something I had in mind. I didn't even find out that film was something that I could do until I got to college. General education, you know, what do I want to do if you're unsure? I thought it was politics, but I'm glad I didn't go into politics because I have a really big creative side that I really need to express all the time. And I think if I was in politics, I'd probably shoot myself. I like 
college only because I love to learn and uh, the social aspect of it, team sports, I was in a you know co-ed fraternity so I did a lot of different things in college that I know that my parents never experienced because they never went to college and it was like my main goal to go to college. Not film school but and now since I have my BA I'm thinking about continuing education and the one thing that I'm thinking is do I need to go to film school? I'm thinking if I have years experience in the industry, I don't need to go to film school. Some colleges, I eventually want to teach at a college, some colleges will require that I have an MFA, which totally sucks, but some don't. You know, some just teach and they have a BA. Who would you rather learn from? I mean, I'd rather learn from someone who's actually been in there, can give me real advice, and has been on set, not someone that just went through years and years of college. But what I will say is that film school is good for networking and connections. The big, like NYU, USC, AFI, those film schools are your top film schools. There's a couple more out there. Those film schools have the industry professionals that will help. They have seminars, you know, sometimes they'll be, you know, they'll come in for, you know, they'll be a guest lecturer in certain classes and stuff like that. So those types of connections, you know, producers, executive producers and stuff like that, they come into those types of schools. Sometimes those big name schools may be worth it, but not for everybody. It doesn't happen for everybody. Just think about that. There's actually an interesting website I found about film school secrets. And I'm gonna post a link to that. And what I found is that the president of a really big film school admitted that less than like 5% of people who are actually enrolled in the school will actually be successful in the industry. And that's a president of a school. And then what you people have to remember is that film school is a business. And it's all about, you know, they can charge as much as they want because they know there are going to be kids out there with dreams and who want to work in film and that think that that diploma is going to get them that job and career that they really want. When it, in reality, it doesn't make or break it. Say you go to college, you know, you want to continue college. My best advice is as soon as you can, take internships. Intern, 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 intern. You have to intern at these companies. DreamWorks, Universal, and you know, NBC Studios, Fox, they all, all these big companies have internships. Do it while you're in college. Do it while it's still free. Go to LA, go to New York, go where the business is. If you intern at some little corporate training place, that's a good place to start, but you need to like work up. If you have a goal to be working on big budget studio films, you have to go directly to those companies. You have to build up to that. Intern. Remember, if you remember one thing from this video, intern. It gives you experience for these big companies and you do it while you're in college. One big question is, why are there so many people out there that go to film school that aren't making it in the industry? And there are a lot of factors that go into that. It's a big question that a lot of people have. And the number one thing that I actually agree with that I saw in an article and I'll post it below is it was on nofilmschool.com and it mentioned how there are people that get into film and they want to make movies but they get into it for the wrong reasons and they expect it to be something that it really isn't. There's a lot of things that happen when you are on a film set, you know, there's a lot of mathematics, there's, you know, science behind it, there's, you know, there's an emotional aspect, there's a psychological aspect. There are such long days on set that it's crazy. The elements that the crew and talent have to work under are insane. I don't envy actors because holy shit, they have it hard. Just the difficult challenges that, that actors and crew have to face on set. Like, I remember doing a big budget TV pilot and I was on set for like 17 hours. Like, and that's normal. That's, I mean, 12 hours, If you, you 12 hours is a lucky day. If you get out in 12 hours, that's an awesome fucking day. Um, I've heard that some people have worked on shows where it's been eight hours, that's heaven sent, okay? So 17 hours, 18 hour days are not uncommon. And when you're on a gig, you're on a show, it's like you have no life but film. So if you don't love it and you wanna be in it, you are definitely in the wrong field. And some people don't want that life. And once they figure that out, it's like, they just throw it to the wind. They're just like, no, I don't wanna be in the film. You know, I, I thought that's what I wanted. And then some people can handle it. People are rough in film. Like people have this really big, you know, I don't wanna say rough exterior, but in film, people are a little bit tougher. They're told no all the time, you know, there's no bullshit in this because there's a lot of money that rides on these projects and they have no time for people who are going to BS, waste their time or their money. So 
that pretty much is how the cookie crumbles in the film industry as far as, you know, film school and hiring and I, I have websites that are really useful for people who are kind of thinking about film school and how they can try and succeed in the industry. Nofilmschool.com, I thought that was an awesome website and DV Guru has a really good article I'm going to post, 10 reasons you shouldn't go to film school and filmschoolsecrets.com and I'll have all those links below. Just think about this, like you're watching YouTube right now and you can do whatever you want. Use YouTube as a medium to get you where you want to be. There are a lot of people out there that are using, utilizing YouTube. It's a perfect example. That's it for episode number one. I hope I got the basics of the film industry out there. I answered your questions. Do you need to go to film school? No. That's my answer. Definitely not. Next episode is going to be about department heads and the ladder you follow to get to the top of those different departments. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you learned something and people who are curious about film school and everything, I hope that answered a few of your questions. And I will see you next episode on the film industry. Yeah.